This is Randall Root and this video is on SQL uh, Server, specifically on Microsoft SQL Server Security, uh, Windows versus SQL Logins. To start off with, I'll go over to Management Studio and we'll discuss uh, uh, the two types of logins. The um, first type of login is a Windows login. And when I right click and I say I want to make a brand new login, you'll see that there's two radio buttons here. One for me to choose Windows Authentication, one for SQL Authentication. When I choose Windows Authentication, I'll end up with a login account that looks like this. The name of my computer, or perhaps the name of my domain, followed by the name of the actual uh, Windows user. <clears throat> if I'm working with a domain, such as my corporate domain, it would say my corporate domain slash Randall. If I was working with my own local computer, I'd say, you know, my local computer slash Randall like I have here. The Windows logins are stored either in a local little database as part of the Windows operating system, as in the case of my example here where I'm using my own laptop, or in the Active Directory database in like a corporate environment. Other Windows accounts are all, uh, such as NT Authority and NT Service, these are also stored locally within the Windows operating system security uh, database infrastructure. Notice I'm saying database, and it is indeed a database. The difference is it's not a SQL Server database, so you won't see it up here under databases. There's lots of different databases out there. If I want to um, <coughs> add a Windows login, I just go through and they say search and type in the um, login name. I have to make sure that I'm in the correct location. So locations would either be the domain or in the uh, my case, my, my laptop, and either uh, type in the name, hit check name, or hit the advance button and go searching for. If I want to make a SQL login, I don't have to search for it. I just make it up. Then I have to go through and put some kind of password. I'll just put a simple password such as pass. Notice that if I'm going to use something as simple as pass, then I need to uncheck the enforced password policy. It's using the standard uh, policy settings uh, that come with Windows uh, operating system, such as I might need to, to type in a, uh, a numbers, uh, be a certain length, or additional characters. I can also use expiration, uh, password expiration, and the ability to force user uh, logins to um, our users to go ahead and change their log information, uh, password information, as soon as they log in. There's some other settings uh, as well, but we'll just focus on these right now. SQL Server logins are actually pretty handy for times where you do not want to provide um, a person using SQL Server access uh, an actual Windows login, or Windows account, I should say. So, for example, if I have my corporate do domain and I want to um, want to make a, a web application, I might not want to go through and give every customer that comes to my website an actual Windows Active Directory account, or even, for that matter, the web server, my web server account for each and every customer. In that case, I might just go ahead and give them a SQL Server login. When you give them a SQL Server login, what happens is that in the master database, they have a table called, um, well, actually there's a, a hidden table, but there's a view um, called syslogins, and in that view you can actually see that the login was added. Notice that the numbering system is different from a standard Windows login. That's because SQL Server uses its own internal numbering system as an ID. Also notice that when you use Windows Authentication, they don't need a password. The password is actually part of the Windows operating system or Active Directory. But when I use SQL Authentication, I actually need to store the password somewhere. It's stored in the master database. 
That way, when somebody needs to access my uh, SQL Server for data, and they need to do so individually, they can put in their name and password. I can pass it for my web application and uh, allow them access as individuals into SQL, um, into SQL Server. This may not be the best for all occasions. There are a number of limitations here. First of all, SQL Server authentication is not in um, encrypted by default. So, for example, if I'm making a connection to SQL, I would go ahead and choose SQL Server authentication. I put in my name. And I put in my password. Well, what would happen is that the name and password would be passed over in clear text. I know it looks like it's in somewhat encrypted here, but it's not. And it certainly is encrypted here inside the database, so that is some protection. But between the client application and the actual SQL server, it has to go across the network line. And as it does so, it does so in clear text, so it can easily be deciphered and the password can be pulled out. Many people feel that this is a, a re real major limitation. However, you should be aware that there are plenty of other ways to encrypt the communication between the, the server and the client. You just have to be responsible and do it yourself. So, for example, in a web application, most encryption is done with a secure socket layer. Or in an internal network, you might use the uh, IP security uh, encryption scheme, or IPsec as it's called. There are plenty of different ways to encrypt communication. So it's not so much that you can't use this uh, SQL authentication securely. It's just that you have to be responsible for doing the encryption yourself. And as such, many books just specify that uh, Windows security is, is better because it's encrypted. What they really mean is that it's encrypted out of the box by Microsoft. To that end, SQL Server, when you first install it, the property settings for the server itself under security is set to allow Windows authentication mode only. You see that I've actually checked SQL Server and Windows authentication. If I had not done so, then what would happen is that when I went ahead and tried to connect with SQL Server authentication, it would not work. It would give me an error message. So if you're going to use a SQL Server authentication scenario, two things to note. You have to turn on the, uh, the SQL Server authentication mode, and you are responsible for doing the encryption. Remember, if they get the name and password to get into your SQL Server, they will be able to see, well, they'll be able to see all the tables that you would give them permissions to. But isn't that the whole purpose of giving them permissions to the tables anyway? Hmm. Nor would they be able to get on the website, or excuse me, into your network with a SQL Server uh, name and password. So, what would they be able to do? Not a whole lot, tell you the truth. Still, any hole is a hole. So while it's not a major gaping one, it certainly is something that you might want to be cautious of. If used responsibly, though, SQL Server authentication can be quite useful on a web application. In this video, we took a look at the difference between Windows and SQL Server logins. And uh, we discussed the, <coughs> the uh, merits of um, SQL Server logins being used when you don't want people... Uh, your customers or users to have an actual Windows uh, account either on a local machine like a web server or in a domain. And we also um, <coughs> uh, reviewed the, uh, the policy that or the topic of encryption as far as passing the name and password across the line in clear text. It's your responsibility to do the encryption. Anyway, I hope that cleared things up for anybody. Um, that's it.